Yeah, well, I think they'll get to the bottom of it. But it just, again, it just shows you how vulnerable our society can become. And it's going to happen more and more. There's a much bigger economic collapse coming. And people have to recognize that just because it hasn't happened yet doesn't mean it's not going to happen. Do you think we'll see a stock market crash? Stock market can always crash. I mean, it's very expensive because in order to prevent the stock market from crashing, they'll just print a bunch of money. And so we end up with a dollar crash instead of a stock market crash. And that that's what I'm more worried about. The disaster that we're headed towards in the future is going to be not only much worse than what we experienced in 08, but much worse than it would have been had the government done the right thing and, and not interfered in the process and allowed for an even bigger decline in the stock market allowed for an even bigger decline in the real estate market. And there's a commercial real estate crisis. I think the entire banking system is completely insolvent right now. It could collapse any day. The country's in a lot of trouble. We have been able to succeed in kicking the can down the road. We've delayed the, you know, that inevitable collapse. It's coming. And every time we delay it, we just make it worse. Today we are diving deep into the economic forecasts of a man who's been both praised and criticized for his bold predictions, Peter Schiff. If you've been following the financial world, you'd know that Schiff isn't shy about sharing his views on the impending economic collapse. But here's the kicker. He also has some strategies he believes can make you a millionaire amidst the chaos. So stick around because you wouldn't want to miss this. There's a much bigger uh, you know, economic collapse coming. And people have to recognize that just because it hasn't happened yet doesn't mean it's not going to happen. And people should try to be prepared for it. Peter Schiff's perspective on an impending economic collapse is rooted in his analysis of financial systems and government policies. He argues that the global economy, especially the U.S. economy, is fragile due to excessive debt unsustainable consumption and prolonged government intervention. Schiff often likens the economy to a drug addict dependent on monetary drugs like easy credit and government stimulus, rendering it unable to function normally without them. Schiff's main concern is that the government and central banks have been kicking the can down the road by postponing the consequences of poor economic policies. Instead of allowing the market to self-correct during crisis, authorities inject more liquidity, increasing debt and further distorting the economy. He warns that this cycle of growing debt and artificial consumption is unsustainable, predicting a massive economic correction. Schiff believes this correction will result in severe economic turmoil, potentially worse than the past recessions. One of the Schiff's most critical views targets government spending and entitlements such as Social Security and Medicare. He argues that these programs are unsustainable and compares them to Ponzi schemes. Uh, it was, you know, it was a horrible uh, deal to begin with. But again, you know, the public was duped into it. Uh, they believed the lies the government was telling them about how this was a big insurance plan and the government was supposed to take the money and invest it so that the investment returns were supposed to pay the benefits, right? It wasn't supposed to be a Ponzi scheme, but of course it was a Ponzi scheme from day one. The government lied to the public about the nature of Social Security. You know, it was really a gigantic fraud. They tried to make it sound like it was an insurance plan. That's why they call it premiums, beneficiaries, trust funds. But the whole thing was a lie from the very from the very beginning. And it's about time we, we told the truth about Social Security. I mean, it's too late now, but we should have told the truth decades ago. According to Peter, these programs are funded by current workers' taxes, which are used to pay benefits to retirees. As the population ages and the ratio of workers to retirees decreases, the strain on these programs will become untenable. Schiff advocates for significant reforms, including means-testing benefits and eventually phasing out these programs to reduce the burden on future generations. Nobody sees the relationship between the borrowing of the money and the inflation that comes down the line and how that impoverishes them anyway. I mean, the inflation tax is how we're paying for all of the government spending that we're not paying for with taxes because we have to pay for it somehow. We don't get any government for free. The only question is, how do we bear the cost? And it's actually cheaper to pay the taxes than to suffer the inflation. Inflation taxes is actually worse. Inflation is another major concern for Schiff, which he views as a hidden tax on the public. 
He explains that when the government spends beyond its means and covers the deficits by creating more money, it leads to inflation. This devalues the currency, reducing the purchasing power of people's savings and wages. Schiff argues that this form of taxation is more damaging than direct taxes, as it distorts economic signals and exacerbates underlying economic issues. Peter believes that the vast money creation during COVID-19 has left substantial liquidity in the system. Tremendous amounts of money was created during COVID, and we've barely, you know, withdrawn uh, much of that liquidity. That's It's still there, and now they're adding to it, and it's going to continue because the, the interest burden on the national debt is already now about a trillion dollars a year. It's going to be two trillion by the end of next year. But the government can't pay that. And it's not going to stop there. I mean, we got almost a $35 trillion national debt. But as that that debt matures, it has to get rolled over at higher rates. Meanwhile, we're running $2 trillion per year plus deficit. So we're adding a couple of trillion. And that's, you know, without an re official recession. You know, the potential is for the annual deficits to go to 4 or $5 trillion. You know, And then we got to finance that. Uh, so the numbers are just so large at this point. With national debt nearing $35 trillion and rising interest costs, he predicts annual deficits could reach 4 to $5 trillion, creating a significant financial burden that the government cannot sustain. At this point, Schiff thinks inflation is the only viable option that the bankers or the politicians believe that they have. There's no way we can pay the debt, and we don't have the honest integrity to default on the debt. So we're just going to create inflation. That's all they're willing to do now. They have to deal with the consequences of inflation, which they'll blame on other people, greedy corporations, OPEC, Putin, but they're never going to accept the responsibility for creating it. So do you think we'll see a stock market crash? Schiff's answer might surprise you. Stock market can always crash. I mean, it's very expensive. Uh, and so if it were just to revert to the mean, that's a big crash if it went there quickly. So it's always possible, but it seems unlikely because the Fed can always interfere by creating more money. And so we end up with a dollar crash instead of a stock market crash. And that, that's what I'm more worried about is the dollar crashing, not the stock market. Because in order to prevent the stock market from crashing, they'll just print a bunch of money. And so it's the, it's the dollar. So the, the, the price of your stocks don't go down that much, but the value of the money that you get when you sell your stocks, that's what goes down. Right. Or the value of the dividends to the extent that you have a dividend on your stock. Of course, a lot of stocks don't pay dividends at all. Schiff believes that the stock market can always crash because it is very expensive. If it were just to revert to the mean, that would be a big crash if it happened quickly. However, he thinks a stock market crash seems unlikely because the Fed can always interfere by creating more money. Instead, we might end up with a dollar crash. Schiff worries more about the dollar crashing than the stock market, because in order to prevent the stock market from crashing, they'll just print a bunch of money. So the price of your stocks might not go down that much, but the value of money you get when you sell your stocks will go down, or the value of the dividends will be dramatically reduced, even if the stock doesn't crash, but the money crashes. Now, let's talk about what happened before the great financial crisis in 2006 and why Schiff believes we're heading towards an even bigger disaster. And so I think a lot of money that was going into, into the dot-com stocks was going into real estate. And, you know, real estate was already rising before 2000. It, it started to go up at like 96, 97, 97 yeah. 98. But what happened after 2000, when their stock market crashed, it was a little bit of a pause. But then real estate just took off because yeah. a lot of that money and what really ignited it was the Fed took interest rates down to 1% after the stock market crashed. And then what people did with all that cheap money was buy houses because now you can get a teaser rate on a 30-year fixed rate mortgage where for the first few years, your payments was 2% or 3% and people had never seen mortgage rates that low. You know, prior to 2008, you know, mortgage rates were like 8%. Before the GFC in 2006, many people pulled their money out of the stock market and invested in real estate. This was right before the real estate bubble burst. 
Schiff explains that after the tech bubble burst in 2000, real estate prices started to soar because the Fed took interest rates down to 1%. People could get teaser rates on mortgages, leading to a massive increase in real estate investments. We're headed towards in the future is going to be not only much worse than what we experienced in 08, but much worse than it would have been had the government done the right thing and, and not interfered in the process and allowed for an even bigger decline in the stock market, allowed for an even bigger decline in the real estate market, and allowed for a real healthy restructuring of the economy back in 09, 2010, 2011. Instead, you know, we just made all the underlying problems that caused that crisis much worse, which is why the next crisis will be even worse than the last one. Schiff argues that the disaster we're heading towards in the future is going to be much worse than what we experienced in 2008 because we didn't allow for a healthy reconstruction of the economy back then. Instead, we just inflated an even bigger bubble to delay dealing with the consequences of the prior bubble. So if you were to have some kind of a stock market scare now and a massive sell-off, do you think we'd see people invest in real estate again? Schiff suggests it may depend on what the FED is doing and where the interest rates are. After the 2007 crash, the Fed dropped the interest rates. But it did nothing to save the real estate market because the bubble had already popped. Schiff emphasizes that the current situation is different because banks are in worse shape now than they were in 2008. But today, I argue that the banks are in much worse shape than they were in 2008 when so many of them failed. And that's because they're losing money on all their mortgages. Every mortgage that they own, they're losing money on because they're sitting on mortgages where they're earning two, three, four percent. But their cost of money is five percent, six, you know. So they're losing, they're not getting money at zero anymore. So mortgages that were profitable when interest rates are at zero, they're losing money on. Uh, and so it's not just the mortgages that are defaulting. In fact, if somebody defaults, that's a relief for the bank. Banks are losing money on all their mortgages because they're sitting on loans where they are earning 2 to 3 percent, but their cost of money is 5 to 6 percent. This is not just about defaulting mortgages, but the value of the mortgages themselves. Schiff argues that the banking system is completely insolvent and could collapse any day. Right? Whenever somebody refinances their mortgage and they were paying 3000 a month and now they're only paying 2000 a month, that's a huge loss for the lender. Now, the only reason the lender was able to eat that loss was because the Fed had rates at zero. But I kept saying they're not going to stay at zero forever. What's going to happen to the banking system when interest rates go up and the banks are sitting on all this underwater paper? Well, we know Silicon Valley Bank, Signature Bank, these banks started to fail. And more banks would have failed if they didn't come up with this bailout plan. But I think the entire banking system is completely insolvent right now. And uh, it could collapse any day. So what's the solution? How can you protect yourself and even become a millionaire amidst this chaos? Schiff advises taking advantage of the current situation by securing a 30-year fixed rate mortgage. According to him, you should focus on borrowing money for 30 years at 3% because inflation will wipe out the value of this debt. In the long run, your payments will be low and you'll benefit financially as the inflation increases. Remember, Schiff's predictions aren't without controversy and not everyone agrees with his views. However, his strategies are worth considering, especially if you're looking to navigate the potential economic collapse. So what do you think about Peter Schiff's predictions? Are you prepared for an economic collapse? Or do you think that the market will find a way to stabilize? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more insights and strategies on how to navigate these uncertain times. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.